Hey guys, Chris here, and this was supposed to be a reaction video to the Year 7 Realm Lab, but instead I thought it would be a little better to sum it up uh, basically through a commentary, and plus nobody wants to watch my boring ass react to the Year 7 reveal, especially since yesterday. I, I thought too, I thought I was boring, because like I don't get excited, like hyped and excited like normal people would, because I'm, I'm shy, I'm an introvert, I'm insecure, so... Yeah, but I think I'm better at doing these commentaries, so anyways, let's get into this. So first off, the Year 7 roadmap. Uh, it looks very promising so far, I must say, and as you can see in Season 1, we're going to Japan with Azami. We'll also be getting a new map, the first time since March 2019, since Burnt Horizon. Emerald Plains will be an Irish map, uh, but it will be available during... Demon Veal, not as soon as it comes out, so that's kind of a bummer, but at least we're still getting a new map, so it's good. Of course, we're getting a new event and an arcade mode, you know, simple as that. But, also with this too, we'll be seeing the return of the Yearly Pass, which is actually available until March 21st. <laughs> now, there are two versions of this pass, unlike before, but it's more like, you know, you have your regular Year 7 Pass, and then you have a premium Year 7 Pass, kind of like what the Battle Pass is in Siege now. So as you can see in the screenshot here, with the regular Pass, you get access to the four new operators 14 days early with the Battle Pass. And then you get four Battle Pass tokens, I'm not sure what they are, I'm guessing that's just access to those Battle Passes throughout the year. And then you get a special Ash bundle, which I'm very happy about because I, I like playing Ash a lot. And honestly, that just looks very sick, even from the preview image. And now for the Year 7 Premium Pass. So, you get the same stuff, the early access, the tokens, and the Ash bundle. But you also get to skip 20 tiers in the Battle Passes in the year, so that's pretty nice. Head start. But then you also get an exclusive Valkyrie bundle called the Valkyrie Bite Set. And if you don't know what this bundle is, it's been appearing here and there throughout the years. Um, I'll put some up right now. Uh, it's a really nice skin. It's dark, as you can see. Cannot wait to get it for Valk if, I, if I'm buying that pass. <laughs> because the Bite Sets, honestly, they look so sick, yeah, honestly. And for Valk, too. Oh, man, that's going to look really nice. And lastly, in the Premium Pass, you get an exotic weapon skin for the MPX, which you can unlock on March 8th. And by first looks, I, I didn't even recognize it was the MPX, but, you know, that's the case with these 3D weapon skins. But it'll probably look better in-game, to be fair, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention two, uh, two things, actually. With these battle passes, we are getting something called Bravo Packs, which have special content in them. And get this, no duplicates. So thank you, Ubisoft, for doing that. <laughs> And also the second thing I want to say is that I'm going to be putting the clips from the live stream in there since I did record all of that reveal event. So here's the clip for the Year 7 roadmap and the pass. So for Year 7, we'll be bringing four seasons as usual and a new operator each season. First off, in Year 7 Season 1, we'll be heading to Japan, so a country that we already visited but that we love. In Season 2, we'll be heading back to Europe, in Belgium more specifically. In Season 3, we'll be heading back to Asia in Singapore. And in Season 4, we'll be uh, heading to South America in Colombia. We're really excited this year. We'll be bringing new maps to the game. This has been a long time, actually three years, that we have brought new maps into Siege. First off, in Season 1, we'll be heading to an Irish country club. In Season 2, we'll be trying something different. We'll be going to Greece, but on a team deathmatch map. So this is something where we'll obviously gather your feedbacks, as this is new for us. And in Season 3, we'll be heading to Singapore, so the same country as the operator. So for events, we'll be bringing a seasonal event every season, as we usually do. This being said, for, since we are doing a lot of efforts in bringing new maps to the game, we'll be using our favorite events uh, with new gameplay modifiers and new customization. We might have a surprise or two during the year for new events. And as far as arcades go, we'll be bringing new arcades into the game and on a more frequent basis. We know that a lot of players like the one-stop purchase that was the Year Pass. This is why we're bringing it back for Year 7. So there will be two uh, versions of the Year Pass, the Year 7 Pass and the Year 7 Premium Pass. This will give you the access to the four operators in early access uh, like before, exclusive customization and access to the four Battle Pass or the four Premium Bundle Battle Passes. So this is something that will be available for a time-limited period up until March 21st. For the Battle Pass, our goal is to keep improving it season after season. 
What you saw last season with the premium bundle where we added 20 tiers is just the beginning. For your 7S1, we have a lot of improvements coming up. First off, the Battle Pass is going to last all the way up until the end of the season, so that you will have more time in order to have the rewards that you want. Secondly, the challenges are going to be lasting all the way up to the end of the season, so, there will be, so you have more time to complete the challenges and progress faster inside of it. Lastly, we're adding something new to the Battle Pass called the Bravo Packs. This is a new type of pack that will feature premium curated list of content, but also with no duplicates at all. This is the first couple of improvements that we have coming up for the year on the Battle Pass. So stay tuned for more during the year. So as you can see in that clip, obviously Season 2 uh, brings us an operator from Belgium, Season 3 to Singapore, and Season 4 to Colombia. And then in Season 2, we'll be getting a new map for Team Deathmatch for that mode, which will come into Season 1 Team Deathmatch mode. And then Season 3 will be, I, I'm assuming, the last map for this year, but I'm sure there will be reworks for current maps as well, as usual, so yeah. And now we'll be getting into the stuff below those seasons, so in Season 1, there will be a Privacy Mode, aka Streamer Mode, and more improvements to detect griefing and disconnecting within the game. Then in Season 2, there will be more improvements for match cancellation, and then Season 3 will be able to report players from the replay system and provide evidence, and many people have been doing that on Twitter, like they record and then they like tag Ubisoft support and then they put the match ID and stuff. Well, this will make it a lot more easier in Season 3, so big improvement so far. And then below that is the reputation system, and this will roll out in three phases throughout Season 2 through Season 4. So obviously Season 2 we will get the first phase with early reverse and friendly fire sanctions for those who do that in game. Season 3 will then be the beta of displaying the reputation score, and there will be consequences of that where if your reputation is low, then they can restrict your voice and text chat for a certain amount of matches. And it, e it can even penalize you for Renown too, so you might want to rethink before team killing that guy for reinforcing beside your Mira. And then lastly, Season 4 will be the third phase where the reputation system will go fully live and be active whilst you play Siege. And in my opinion, I really like how they're spreading it out instead of just releasing it as like one whole buggy mess. I'm not saying it would be buggy, but that's what I would think because it's Ubisoft. But it's way better to kind of like spread it out and put it in phases before the full thing actually goes live. So GG's Ubisoft. Player protection, c'est un sujet qui est très important pour nous à Rainbow Six Siege, mais aussi à Ubisoft. Ce faisant, avec l'équipe Player Behavior et des services internes à Ubisoft, nous avons travaillé sur un set d'options qui seront mis en place en dehors du jeu, mais aussi à l'intérieur du jeu. Le premier permettant d'augmenter votre vie privée au niveau compte. Le deuxième permettant de protéger votre gameplay, votre gameplay privacy, tout en jouant. Avec le lancement de la saison 1, nous ferons aussi des améliorations au niveau de la détection des abus qui sont effectués par des joueurs et qui déconnectent juste après les avoir faits. Un bon exemple est le cas d'un joueur se connectant à un match, lançant une frag grenade, de façon à blesser un teammate et se déconnectant pour éviter toute sanction. Ce n'est pas acceptable à l'heure actuelle. Nous allons donc améliorer nos détections de façon à neutraliser cette frag grenade afin qu'elle ne pénalise pas un joueur fer. Match Replay est un super système qui a été ajouté au sein de Rainbow Six Siege. Nous avons entendu la communauté sur le fait de pouvoir reporter des joueurs générant de la toxicité ou du cheating au sein de notre jeu via le match replay. Ce faisant, nous allons ajouter des options de reporting où les joueurs pourront signaler tout joueur ayant des comportements perturbateurs ou des cas de cheating directement à notre équipe. Depuis bientôt un an, nous avons effectué un shadow deployment du Reputation System. Durant l'année 7, c'est là où nous allons commencer à mettre en place un rollout de notre système de réputation par phase. La première phase et les phases subséquentes ont, seront tournées autour des préventives sanctions. En saison 2, nous allons nous attaquer aux récidivistes qui abusent du friendly fire, mais aussi du reverse friendly fire. La résultante de cette sanction est induite 
par le fait de ne plus pouvoir faire de friendly fire à travers un match sur une durée long terme. Nous allons appliquer ce système-là aussi au voice chat, mais aussi au chat écrit, ce qui nous permettra d'aller bloquer les récidivistes. Une personne se trouvant sous cette sanction-là ne pourra plus utiliser les canaux de voice et de write and chat. Elle n'est pas appliquée pour un match et enlevée pour le match suivant, mais elle va se transposer sur plusieurs matchs. Avec la saison 3, nous ferons l'introduction du Reputation Score en mode bêta auprès de nos joueurs. Via cet affichage de Reputation Score, nous souhaitons commencer un pré-onboarding qui permettra à nos joueurs de savoir comment ils sont perçus par le système, mais aussi par rapport aux autres joueurs. Ainsi, ils auront un Reputation Score qui leur seront appliqués avant une activation complète. Et avec saison 4, le nouveau réputation système. À partir de ce moment-là, un système de récompense et de sanctions commencera à être déployé. Pour un joueur ayant une mauvaise réputation, il pourrait se trouver en phase de game mode restreint, de malu au niveau des alpha packs, etc., de ne plus avoir accès aux test serveurs, etc. On veut cependant que les sanctions qui sont appliquées auprès d'un joueur soient vraiment reliées à son behavior. Donc une personne qui initie du friendly fire se trouvera avec des sanctions reliées au friendly fire et non pas à des sanctions reliées au malus de Renown. Tous les sujets autour du player behavior, des comportements perturbateurs et de l'anti-cheat sont des sujets complexes. Il n'y a pas une seule solution. Ce sont beaucoup d'itérations et c'est quelque chose sur lequel nous voulons travailler activement et c'est une priorité pour Rainbow Six Siege. Next up, if you're a console player like me, you're gonna like this section. In Season 1, we will get the replay system like how PC players do, so now you'll be finally able to see if your aim was actually ass or if the other guy on the other team was using an MK. And then Season 2 through 4, we will get more customization over our controls for aiming, new controller input presets, and lord and behold, field of view settings, the feature that all of us has been asking for on console. And below that is the other new content we'll be getting, so obviously season 1 will be attacker repick and team deathmatch, season 2 will be the shooting range and operator tips in the menus, season 3 will be rank 2.0, and lastly season 4 we will have a permanent arcade mode, thank god. Now you may have not noticed that I didn't mention crossplay and cross progression. Well, they actually delayed it in in the clip you're about to see. They delayed it to season four, and uh, I completely understand why it was delayed since it takes a lot of work to get the crossplay and cross progression to actually work correctly. But at least we know it's coming, so yeah, just gonna take a while. Donc en ce qui concerne la visée, c'est plus dur de viser et de contrôler avec une manette par rapport à un clavier souris. Donc là, aujourd'hui, on a très peu d'options pour le joueur, donc pour avoir plus de flexibilité et de confort. Donc ce qu'on veut, c'est rajouter une gamme d'options pour le joueur afin qu'il puisse tweaker, paramétrer bah, comme il veut euh, sa manette. Donc euh, pour donner hein, des exemples simples, donc déjà, on veut séparer les réglages entre juste regarder et la DS. Comme ça, le joueur peut paramétrer différemment les deux cas. Mais aussi, par exemple, aussi des, de pouvoir paramétrer les vitesses de rotation. Donc, euh, par exemple, verticalement et horizontalement. Par rapport au recall, on veut davantage personnaliser les recalls sur console. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, on applique euh, une valeur stricte arbitraire de 20% en moins de recalls pour les joueurs console. Et on veut sortir de ça. Donc, on veut vraiment prendre les weapons et puis les paramétrer de manière individuelle, comme on le fait déjà sur, euh, sur PC. Les joueurs PC peuvent paramétrer le champ de vision de 60 à 90. Par contre, sur console, les joueurs sont bloqués à 60 et n'ont pas de possibilité de pouvoir jouer avec ce chiffre. Donc ça, c'est une frustration pour les joueurs. C'est quelque chose qu'ils demandent depuis très longtemps. Donc euh, bah, je suis contente de dire qu'on est en train de travailler dessus. Et donc là, ça va offrir plus de confort pour le joueur parce que finalement, ça va élargir le champ de vision. Euh, pour le joueur, donc ils vont pouvoir avoir des choses, euh, plus de choses, d'éléments autour d'eux, et donc bah, c'est un réel avantage hein, pour, pour, pour le jeu. 
Now next up is the narrative restructure, and this is for lore fans like me. And basically this brings a lot more focus to the military background of these operators. Basically, this means that we're going to be seeing more of the operators interacting with each other more often and we'll be seeing each squad take on a unique identity. An example of this is with the CGI cinematic last Friday with Safia and Ella, along with Callie and Smoke. And to top it off, there will be four squads and Nighthaven that we can follow along and even root for them too. And in my opinion, this is very cool since I find the siege lore to be very immersive and intriguing and brings pretty much a whole new perspective to the game and its operators. The last couple of years we focused on the simulation and on the end of year tournament. This year you see a huge divide between Nighthaven and the Rainbow Six Siege squad. And because of that, Harry's now breaking up Rainbow Six into smaller squads. You'll see team captains leading in a specialized force and they'll start moving across the globe doing what they've been trained to do, to put their lives on the line. And that brings a lot more focus on their military background and you'll see an arc of storytelling throughout the year. With this change, you'll see operators interacting with each other more often and you'll see each squad take on a unique identity that you can follow along and also root for them as they go out into the world. So early on I mentioned that they are adding a team deathmatch mode and they are also adding a permanent arcade mode that will rotate with events each week and from the clip I'm going to show you they have modes like legacy, attrition, golden gun, etc. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this because honestly when you're stressed out on siege there's really nothing you can do so it's nice to have that kind of mode where you can just chill out in. So here you go, here's the clip. What we want to do is to offer more variety in terms of content to the Siege player because we have many playlists that are very serious, you know, even Quick Match is a bit serious. But players, they are asking for a more relaxed experience, you know, fun, more variety, less stress, and we are trying to give them that this year. So first, like I said, we are adding the Team Death Match, that will be a permanent playlist. Uh, we tried so for two years now to add arcade in the game. That was very short time, but we see uh, a demand from the community to replay those arcades more often. So we decided to create a playlist where you will have the different arcades that we've created rotating every week. And of course, we will be adding more as the season progress, and we always listen to the community depending on the ones that are their favorite or the ones that they like less. This year I think it's going to be very exciting because between the new way to play Siege with the Team Deathmatch and the Arcade and the new rank mode that will really create a competitive journey every season, I think it's one of the most exciting year for playlists. So next is the Rank 2.0 system uh, and apparently if I'm correct from the clip that I'm about to show you, I think we'll be starting, like all of us will be starting at copper and we will work our way up to the higher ranks. So by the looks of it, I, I mean I don't want to assume anything, but it looks like placement matches will be gone. I don't, I don't know, they'll have to inform us more on this. They are also revamping the rewards that you get at the end of the season, like say if you hit plat now you just get one charm. But if you hit plat in this new ranked uh, experience, you will get the copper, bronze, silver, and gold charms along with the plat charm as well. So it's pretty nice, I would say. And also from this other screenshot, you can get more rewards such as an alpha pack or even an operator card for hitting certain ranks. And I like this as it makes ranked more worth to grind the ranks for. But obviously with everyone's main concern, hopefully they can solve out the anti-cheat with cheaters and stuff like that. So, But otherwise though, it's looking very, very good. Today, the team is not very happy about two things uh, on rank. First, it's seen by the player as a progression system that you should progress in terms of ranks. But in fact, the system is trying to guess your rank as fast as possible and it's not at all a progression. We want to fix that. If I take the experience of an average bronze player, he will start after his placement matches probably in silver or low silver, and then he will gradually go back to bronze and maybe low bronze, and it's not necessarily a very rewarding experience. With the new system, he will start in copper and will always go up until he reach 
these bones and maybe since he will play more for the time being he will get stronger and maybe reach silver or might, might reach gold. So we want everybody to be able to progress from the start to where they belong. Also, this place is supposed to be the ultimate competitive experience, but today the reward is only one charm per season and it's a bit lackluster. So first, we are improving two things for the reward. The number of rewards you will get, that will increase by a lot, and also the way you get them. So the way you get your reward, right now, it's a bit strange, because if you are platinum, you won't get the copper charm. So it makes the copper charm as rare as the platinum charm, and it doesn't make any sense. So if you are platinum in the new system, you will get all the rewards from the previous rank, gold, silver, bronze, and copper. We are making every rank 100 points from each other, and we are putting a reward for each rank. So it means that gold 4 will get a reward, gold 3 will get a reward, gold 2 will get a reward, and so on. So you will always be in the reach of your next reward. So right now, the current target for the new rank system is year 7 season 3. Now moving on, I spoke about the shooting range and the tip systems for operators. Now what you're about to see obviously is a work in progress, but it's looking very promising so far. And like I said, they will have a tip section in the operators menu now. So for say, if you want to learn about using Bandit as a new player, then those tips will be there to help you understand him, his gadget, and even like separate gadgets such as the nitro cell and barbed wire. So onboarding on Siege is a very complex issue because Siege is a very complex game. We need to make sure that we don't mask how complicated the game is and make sure that we prepare a player for their first PvP match and so that they contribute towards their team and they understand why Siege is fun and why it's been around for as long as it has. A few facets that we're looking into, one would be learn areas. So the first of which would be at the shooting range. So these are playable spaces that the players can enter. Players are actually getting hands-on in these learning experiences without the pressure of being within a match. Another element is help systems. So these help systems will be supportive elements that we are gonna provide for players. The first of which for help systems is the operator tips. Operator tips is a new system where players are gonna be able to bring up uh, information about an operator or secondary gadgets. And not only can you read, but you can also watch and learn how to pull off those different gadgets and how to be using those abilities in your favor and to uh, help you contribute towards your team. We're also looking at new ways to introduce Siege to players, whether they're new to Siege entirely or whether we're returning. Playable tutorials that players can get their hands on. For example, there's a lot of different elements that we do not introduce in situations, such as droning. We need to do better at preparing players for the, the elements that they're going to be finding when they get into PvP, so that way we can reduce any kind of confusion they may be occurring and helping them relate to the situation they find themselves in. Furthermore, we want to provide rewards that are very interesting for players that are new to Siege, because we do know that so, some of the systems, the progression systems that we have in Siege, are really geared towards experienced players and don't offer a lot of uh, utility or interest for players that don't have a lot of operators or don't necessarily have the ability to equip the cosmetics that they're earning by playing in our progression systems. Now we get onto some of the balancing. So. Obviously yesterday we saw the Goyo rework, but there will also be reworks for Valkyrie and for Zero and Thatcher too. And speaking of Thatcher, uh, there is a change in the gadgets now where they will make his EMP grenade into something they call a general gadget. So in this clip you're going to see Gridlock has this EMP grenade, but it'll be available to more operators obviously. But yeah, not bad. Aujourd'hui, on a une équipe dédiée qui s'occupe de l'équilibrage du jeu, qui se trouve à Barcelone. Et donc, cette équipe, elle s'occupe d'ajuster, de retravailler, de modifier bah, les caractéristiques des armes et des opérateurs, que ce soit leur habilité principale ou les génériques gadgets. Et aussi, elles améliorent et créent de nouveaux systèmes. Donc, pour la N7, on a plusieurs, bah, beaucoup de rework. Donc d'abord en ce qui concerne les opérateurs, donc on a déjà communiqué sur Valkyrie et Goyo qui vont arriver début d'année, mais aussi nous travaillons par exemple hein, sur Zero pour que sa caméra n'auto-perspue automatiquement la surface, mais que ça soit un choix du joueur, donc que ça soit manuel. Nous avons aussi Bandi, donc de pouvoir déployer une batterie, euh, bah, plusieurs batteries sur, une, sur un même mur. 
nous avons Dokebi, donc euh, Dokebi qui puisse affecter les joueurs éliminés par son appel. Et le gros rework là en cours, c'est euh, Thatcher. Pour Thatcher, ce qu'on voudrait, c'est d'augmenter le plafond de compétences pour l'utilisation de son gadget. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, bah, c'est un throwable, euh, on peut lancer très loin, l'effet est très grand et ça passe à travers les murs. Donc il n'y a pas beaucoup de, de risques euh, avec Thatcher. Thatcher aussi est beaucoup banni, donc c'est quelque chose qui aussi euh, bah, nous dérange. Donc c'est bah, pour ça qu'on est en train de travailler Thatcher. Donc on a eu plusieurs itérations. Donc pour Thatcher, euh, notre prochaine itération hein, qu'on qu doit tester, c'est finalement là, c'est pas bah, de garder la, la MP Grenade, mais pouvoir aussi la, la cooker. Donc euh, plus on la, on la cook, qu'on la garde dans la main, plus euh, son range euh, va être grand. Donc son air d'effet. Donc ça met un petit peu plus de... Bah, demande un peu plus de compétences. Donc l'équipe Balancing euh, travaille également euh, sur un générique gadget, donc qui est une EMP grenade. Donc ça, c'est pour faire une alternative à Thatcher. Donc euh, un peu comme ce qu'on fait déjà dans le jeu, où on a Thermit et euh, Ibana, Maverick, et on a proposé récemment le générique gadget Hardbridge. Nous, notre objectif est que chaque décision euh, du joueur euh, repose sur un processus réfléchi. Donc de réfléchir aux bons outils par rapport à la situation. Donc c'est pour ça que nous on est en train de regarder pour rendre bah, les opérateurs, bah, réduire les opérateurs bons à tout faire. Parce qu'on ne veut pas que chaque opérateur puisse répondre à toutes les situations. And lastly, esports. Now, they will allow us to have the type of cameras that you see in Pro League, like the free slash ghost cam, to detach from the operators and roam the entire map to see all the action that's taking place. And then they announced the locations of the upcoming majors, so in May 2022, it will be in North America, whilst August will be held in the United Arab Emirates. It says Europe slash MENA in the clip, but it's been confirmed to be held in the UAE. And then in November, it'll be the Asia-Pacific region, and then February 2023 will be the six invitationals in North America, which I'm guessing is Canada, which hopefully they'll allow spectators for. Anyways, moving on to more esports stuff, uh, the esports bundles will now include a background card instead of the charms, which I find to actually be good because I never run the charms. <laughs> and now 50% of the revenue from those bundles that you buy will go straight to the team, so Pretty dank, I must say. We have a lot of features planned for esports and viewership engagement. Um, the biggest one probably for the year is going to be the free cam or the ghost cam, as some of you might know it. It is the ability to detach the camera from the operators and roam the entire map no matter where the action is taking place. This should be possible for both the cache the cam as well as during the replay functionality. So when it comes to the replay functionality, we're trying to make a lot of different changes to improve the overall quality of life, just to make the usage easier. Um, the main thing we want to tackle with the replay functionality is the backward compatibility. Um, right now, when a hotfix comes out or a new patch arrives, the replay files become unusable. In the future, we want them to have at least a shelf life of the entire season, so you don't have to uh, re-download a client to watch previous replays. When it comes to our competitive roadmap this year, we already know the destinations for our three majors. The first major will take place in North America. The second major in August, we're heading to either Europe or maybe the Middle East. And the third major in November will take place in Asia Pacific. Our team has also been making long-term plans in terms of the sixth invitational. We know that in, starting in 2024, the SI will travel the world. However, there is a chance that we begin this progress already in 2023. So stay tuned and see where the SI will take place next year. When it comes to R6 Share, we have been working on multiple improvements across the board. The biggest one is probably the revenue share between Ubisoft and our partnered organizations. From now on, when you purchase a team item of your favorite organization, the organization will receive 50% of the revenues instead of 30. To really recognize the contributions of our partners, we're also adding additional items to our sixth share. We're doing this by expanding the number of teams in tier one to 15 teams. All of them will get full operator bundles, the weapon skins, 
and additional MTX items. Additionally, every Tier 3 team will move into the Tier 2 category, meaning you have more ways to support your favorite teams and there will be more items overall in the esports ecosystem. With 2022, we are also adding a new customization category for R6 Share, um, which is the Operator Background Card. These will be included in the team bundles that you purchase and they're flexible. It means you can use it for any of your favorite operators to represent your favorite team. So these were the high level updates for R6 Esports in 2022, but we have a lot more information coming up on our website and our social media channels. So that'll be it for today, guys. This was a long ass script. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, I would like to do more of these news type of content because I feel like I'm better at them than the reaction videos. So if, if I can, I'll try to do more of these. But if you did enjoy this video and if it was informational and helpful to you, please make sure to drop a like. And if you want to see more Siege content from me, make sure to subscribe as well and turn on the post notification bell icon. It really helps a lot with the channel. But hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.